Hi, I'm Joy Forsyth, and I run the Software Security Research Group. I support the Fortify product lines, including the Static Analysis, SEA, and WebInspect Dynamic Analysis tool. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Joanna. Hello, my name is Joanna Berkey. I'm joining Joy today to talk about the Heartbleed vulnerability. I manage the DB Labs security research organization within HP Tipping Point in the enterprise security products area. DB Labs is responsible for taking security intelligence and making it actionable down in our network security por product portfolio. Yeah, as Joanna said, we're going to talk today a little bit about Heartbleed, which has been a, a big issue of concern for many people these days, this past couple weeks. Um, Joanna, if you could start by just talking a little bit about OpenSSL and TLS. Absolutely. So I'm sure you've heard a bunch of new terms and acronyms being thrown around as everyone talks about Heartbleed. And one of those you'll have heard a lot is OpenSSL. OpenSSL is a library of code. And what it does is support the SSL and TLS security protocols. Those are the protocols that are used when you sit down at your computer and you access Amazon or you access Walmart and you want to make sure that you really are talking to who they say they are, SSL and TLS are the protocols that are activated down on the wire. When you see a padlock on your web browser screen or you see HTTPS in the address line, then you know that you're using those protocols. Chances are also likely that you're probably using OpenSSL as well. OpenSSL is an open source library. That means that the code running in OpenSSL is open to anybody to be able to examine and look at. Therefore, the Heartbleed vulnerability was observed recently and data about it made public, which Joy's going to go into a little more detail on. Yeah, so the actual details of the Heartbleed bug are that it's a, a, a mistake was made by the developer implementing a specific feature of TLS in OpenSSL. What that means very specifically is he a request comes in where they ask for a particular piece of data and they give a length and in fact the developer failed to check that the length matched up with a piece of data. This is a very common mistake found in coding and one that we've been noticing in code for many many years. Uh, however in this particular case it meant that we are potentially giving an attack or sensitive data from memory. Limited amount of data, limited to 64k, but that data could contain everything from usernames and passwords to the private uh, certificate keys that the services are using to secure this communication. So this is an issue near and dear to my heart because static analysis, which is my primary focus, often it can identify these bugs during development. And in fact, that's the best way to identify these bugs. However, sometimes these bugs do make it out into the wild. And the most important thing is to figure out how do we identify and address them now, um, in addition to preventing these in the future. The first place that ESP is helping out with this is actually still in, in the Fortify product line. Uh, the WebInspect tool has already released a check as of April 11th, last Friday, to identify these in uh, existing websites. And for those of us who, for those of you who use WebInspect, you can go ahead and do a secure base update to get access to that now. Um, Joanna, I know Tipping Point has also already responded to this. Yes, so the Tipping Point product line provides network security. That means we are products that ourselves use OpenSSL, as well as the function of our product being able to provide coverage and protection down on the wire in real time in the network against products that might be vulnerable to this bug. As soon as the Heartbleed vulnerability information went public on this past Monday evening, the researchers in Tipping Point DB Labs immediately started looking at the vulnerability and how we would provide coverage for it. Simultaneously, our development organization went in to verify that none of our shipping products or even supported products were affected by Heartbleed. We were able to verify and communicate very quickly to our customers that all of our intrusion prevention systems, next generation firewalls, management systems, and online portals were non-vulnerable to Heartbleed. So our coverage at that point was strictly upon being able to, as quickly as possible, roll out filter-based coverage so that anyone using the Tipping Point product line would be able to safely continue to run the OpenSSL library while they worked on patching it on a schedule that would work for them. 
As we began to investigate the vulnerability, we decided to do this in a two-phase process. The first one was to write and ship what we call a custom filter package early on Tuesday afternoon. This gave customers a very quick, very small filter package to install on their systems to provide coverage against the attempted exploitation of Heartbleed. At the same time, we worked on writing more in-depth what we call vulnerability filters back in the office that we would then roll out on Thursday evening in, our, in an out-of-band release of our digital vaccine filter package. So the filters that we made available to our customers in that short period of time gave them two different options. Customers have the ability to run what we call a policy filter, which allows them to apply policy on the network saying that any SSL heartbeat over a certain size would not be allowed. This was very good protection against heartbleed because it's very much an anomaly for regular SSL or TLS traffic to have a large heartbeat packet. The filter that we then additionally rolled out two days later gave more targeted coverage against the actual vulnerability itself. So anyone now running our coverage is able to have virtual patch management down on the wire while they're then able to go in and upgrade OpenSSL or turn off the extension in OpenSSL that opens up their products to the vulnerability. That sounds great, Joanna. And I want to just emphasize how this, this whole response really does uh, bring to bear the strengths of ESP. Mm -hmm. We're experts mm -hmm. in uh, information network and application security, and the ability to address a problem from those, all of those perspectives is really one of our strengths. Um, Yes, Joy is exactly right there. And in fact, you'll notice coming up on your screen a reference to the blogs that we maintain as enterprise security products that you can reference to not only learn more about Heartbleed and what we've learned about the vulnerability and how we cover it, but also monitor for all of the security research that the Fortify, Tipping Point, and ArcSight teams are doing on a daily basis to inform you more about how to stay protected and aware of what's going on in the security landscape. Thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you, Joy, very much for your time. We've enjoyed getting to talk to you about one of the biggest vulnerabilities that we've seen hit in quite a long time. Thanks a lot.